Hello, my name is Ian Slagle, and today I'll be presenting on how I use Julia to solve Pokemon Go battles. So, a little introduction to myself. Uh, I'm an undergraduate student at Co College in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and that's me in the bottom right corner there. So, some motivation behind this uh, Pokemon Go is an immensely popular uh, mobile game, it's got over a billion downloads. Uh, and trainer battles were introduced in December 2018, uh, which has since developed into quite the competitive scene, both in-app with the Go Battle League and outside of the app with the Silverina, which I help out with. Uh, so a little bit about the Pokemon Go mechanics. Um, the goal of the game is to reduce your opponent's health bars down to zero before yours get reduced uh, using damage that comes in two flavors. Uh, one is fast moves, which, as the name implies, can be done quite more quickly uh, and generate energy. Um, and charge moves are the other kind, which require energy from those fast moves but can deal a lot more damage. However, you and your opponent have two opportunities per game to shield all of the, almost all of the damage that comes from a charge move. And because this is a Pokemon game, there are certain Pokemon that do better against other Pokemon. Uh, and in order to take advantage of that fact, uh, you can switch in uh, a different Pokemon to your active Pokemon slot, uh, but that comes at a cost because then for the next 60 seconds you can't switch again. A lot of these game theory simulations require a lot of memory intensive code and so condensing that down as much as possible makes this a lot more efficient. And so the part of the game that changes, uh, this dynamic part, uh, can be broken down into this um, natural hierarchy of the state which has two teams, which has three Pokemon each. And then each of these have some information that must be uh, stored in that state. Um, now, you might notice that these don't correspond to nice powers of two, uh, but thanks to some help of uh, people in the Julia discourse, we were able to condense that down to 18 bytes for this struct, uh, which as it turns out is less than if you were to go and type this into your REPL. Uh, and even better, uh, this is heap allocated because it's an array, um, whereas this is going to use static arrays, so it's a lot, uh, it's stack allocated. Uh, the Monte Carlo simulations show just how expressive Julia code can be. Um, so breaking it down into different functions is going to help with uh, efficiency of code as well. And so here we can see exactly what happens at each step along a battle. We're going to resolve any leftover chance, then we're going to get possible decisions of this battle. And if either of those is zero, which means that you don't have any moves that you can do, uh, then the game is over and you get the score through this short circuit evaluation. But if not, you play that turn selecting a random decision. Now, of course, this is a Monte Carlo simulation, so we want to do that a lot of times. And so uh, we can do that here uh, using a map function. And then we can plug in in, and that'll just do, say, a thousand simulations, uh, just like that with one line of code. Now the Nash simulations are a bit more complicated, um, but I was able to translate these mathematical formulas into some jump code uh, without much linear programming experience beforehand. And then through the help of the Julia discourse again, I was able to uh, make this a lot more efficient. And this is a comparison of the algorithm that we ended up with versus calling uh, lrslib a C library. We can also compare these two methodologies for the Pokemon games themselves. Uh, so here, uh, anything below 0.5 is a loss, anything above 0.5 is a win, and then 0.5 itself is a tie. Um, and we can see the Monte Carlo score and the Nash score, and the Nash score goes 12 turns deep uh, in its evaluation. And we can see that the, there is quite the trend here between the two. Um, which is not quite y equals x, um, and that was done for 50 Pokemon that were chosen to be particularly glassy so that the simulations uh, ran much quicker. We can also do the UMAP of 700 Pokemon versus 700 Pokemon through the Monte Carlo simulations, which are a lot more quick to run, and we can reduce that down into two dimensions using UMAP here, and we can see that there's some very strong uh, structures we see with the fast move type. Um, but if we break that down even further with the Pokemon type, we can see that there's more structure contained within there as well. For instance, here's all of the grass rock Pokemon, and here's some grass poison, and down here, and then this is grass dark. 
And then here is a Monte Carlo tree search battle, which is an extension of that Monte Carlo using reinforcement learning. And what the interesting part of this happens right around here. So they're just about to get a thunder. And instead of letting the Azumarill take that, which is going to pretty much take it out, uh, they're swapping in this Alola Marowak, uh, which is able to survive and wasn't going to do much damage against the Dragonair anyways. And then that Azumarill, which we saved, can come back in and use that Ice Beam, which almost takes out that Dragonair entirely. Uh, this is a real thing that human players do. Uh, we refer to it in the community as a sacrifice swap, and that's what we can see happening in this clip here. So, some conclusions. Uh, Julia allows for both expressive and efficient code that can be prototyped quite quickly. Uh, these features allow me to create this package uh, that helps solve Pokemon Go battles. And then, honestly, I would encourage you to make a Julia package to learn something. Before I started this, I didn't know much about game theory or linear programming or reinforcement learning. Uh, and those were really a good experience to learn through making this package. And also, ask questions in the discourse. They're very kind people uh, and have been able to help me with a number of problems that I've had throughout development. So some credits. Um, here's some of the links to the Julia discourse discussing this. Um, of course, the Julia language itself, and a lot of the mathematical underpinnings uh, behind these algorithms, um, as well as PVPoke simulations that are uh, simulations of individual battles that came before this. So, thanks for listening to my talk. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to me.